Yo, what's up? This is Saladin Salon for King Corsa, Hunter Depressor, and Neapolitan, I mean, yeah, Neapolitan Mestino Historical Talk. What's going on? Um, Saladin Salon, Connie Corso family. Um, I'm one of the administrators from King Corso Historical Talk. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm going to read this article to you. It's a long article, so I might have to break this down into like two to three segments of it. But, uh... It needs to be manifested. This is about the Italian corsos, how they were bred, and the history of it, and what went on in, in, in various stages of the development of the dogs. This should be manifested. This should be taught. This should be known. You know what I'm saying? So this is where you have an understanding of the Italian corsos and what went on, on in South Italy. So all right, I'm going to start this off. So this article, this is an article by a Norwegian farmer, Corso <clears throat> published brand breeder Hector Sutherland. He said, um, or Swedeland, who claims that today's King Corso is a mix of rustic Corso crossbred with Neapolitan Mastiff, Boxer, a Birdo, and Bull Mastiff. The only true King Corso left in Pugla, made out of 18 dogs by Pablo Berber, who left the breeding program in 1986. Now, um, just to give you some reference, Vito got plugged in 87, Mike Satilli Sr. brought the Sicilian dolls, the Sicilian Bacharos, here to, to America in 1988. So I'm going to read that again. He said, who left the breeding program in 1986. So this meant that the recovery breeders were still recovering and still selecting dogs in the 80s, early 90s. Food for thought. All right. It says, it left the breeding program in 1986 because, of, I mean, because the sack wanted to mix in other breeds. I'm going to say that again. He says sacks. Sack wanted to mix in other breeds. I'm going to say it again. He says Sack wanted to mix in other breeds to make a King Corso, to make the King Corso a faster growing and earn some good money in the, in the, in the process from the breeds newly revived popul 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 oh, man, popularity. So what that saying is, like I told you in the past, that most Italians were poor. So, this was a money scheme thing. The recovery stage was a money scheme thing. It was to get paid, make these dogs, and, uh, and sell them to you. And a lot of enthusiasts went over there. They bought these dogs, not knowing the true essence of what a Corso really is. But that's nobody's fault back then, because none of this information was given out. But now it's here, though. So now... With clarity, we're going to learn. All right, let me read. It says, uh, I've been in contact with Hector um, Sweetland recently, and he says that also the rustic Corso Pugla has been diluted as a breed because of the same issues as the King Corso, popularity, the greed after money. He says he, he has quit breeding the Corso Pugla and says that it is hard to find a true rustic corso working dog. And this is not Mike Satilli saying this. This is this dude Hector Sweeveland saying this. All right, I'm going to keep reading. He also says, um, And Corso from Pugla, Pablo Berberstrand, may after all not be more rustic corso than, than the corso bred from sack. This is what he's saying. So the two dogs might be one of the same. Saying that by sharing them is not rustic as Pablo's, Pablo Barber is claiming. He said that, that, that said that I have friends that have a cane corso. And they told me that it's the best watchdog he ever had. As I understand by talking to Hector's, um <clears throat> Yeah, Hector um, Sweeveland. The pure breed Pugla strain 
with scissor bite has been crossed back into the King Corso Society. Hector has given up on the debris because of the high percentage of HD, which is hip dysplasia, plagued the dogs with no working abilities left. There ain't any systematic HD checks through x-ray either. And if there is, no suspicion about it. There's suspicion about it. He said, no, if there is no suspicion about it, which sounds a bit a bit funny, according to Hector um, Sweevelin, a uh, once a pure breed published strain of working dogs are extinct. So he's saying that these rustic calls aren't no more. Now, I don't know if this statement is true, because again, Mike Satilli went in Sicily and found that's still southern Italy, but it's, it's off from the mainland. It's an island. And he found the true kind of depressor there. The true kind of depressor. The Sicilian Bacharo is a kind of depressor. But I'm going to read on. He says, uh, there ain't no any assist. I mean, he's talking about the hip dysplasia. He said, the public strain of working dogs are extinct. But here is the story about the King Corso breed that went down under according to him. So this is, according to Hector, this is the story. He says, today, Mass Massimo Macchino is an Italian breeder who has bred only, I mean, bred on the scissor bite corso and, and not tight with the undershot. Massimo, a front man of a Sico club of Italy with the scissor bite, and he's the host of arrangements, arrangements and tests. According to Hector Sevelin, Massimo Macchino once had good dogs, but in the struggle of keeping the old Corso, when the world wants the new, he gave up. He gave up. He gave into the new Corso, and and uh, who by now often are um, were hip dysplasia plagued. Hector Sutherland says that the radiographs and tests of several of these dogs that have proved his contentions. So I guess he got dogs from this dude um, Hector. And yo, he, you know what I'm saying? He left. All right. The situation of the rustic Corso dog was an alarmant in the 1970s and threatened the breed's existence. The breed was, at a time, not welcome among other dog enthusiasts and was reduced to a very low numbers of individuals despite the efforts of Bernati and Professor Balada, who tried to re who, who tried to revive the breed. Check this out, man. I don't believe that. And I'm going to say that again. I don't believe that. You see him I'm talking about with the holes in the story? Like with these guys, though? Yo, the kind of depressor was there. The Neapolitan Mastiff was there. So what are these people talking about? Like, yo, this stuff is crazy. Like, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. This is a lie. But all right, I'm going to keep reading. And... It was in, in 1976 that an enthusiastic uh, uh, dog lover, professor, and researcher in Italian tradition, Pablo Berber, got the attention of the breed when he published an article in NC, in the NC magazine. The first thing he did was initiate the rescue operation, which was, con was, which was conducted by him and some other enthusiasts who had made contact with him after they had read the article, some of these were from already established dog environment environment with other SCI Molossula type breeds. In 1983, they found the sack. Safeguarding properties and rescue of the breed was an operation primarily on a primarily purpose. This group got a bit of a shock in October of 1986 when Barbara um, Barbara left when he left SAC. He says, and um, there were several reasons why it happened. I have a person who spoke to Barbara on several occasions, and we have eaten dinner together several times, and we have plenty time to discuss the Corsos, and I've gotten confirmation about why he did what he did in 1986. The true explanation follows here. He says, um, there were several reasons, okay, 
He said, true, all right, Pablo Berber left the group because the group's intention to destroy the breed rather than protect it and save it. And I'm going to say that again. He said, the reason why he left the group, because the group, rather than save the dogs and protect it, they rather, like, destroy it. So this is the reason why I was leaving. And I'm telling you today... That I ain't going nowhere. Like me, Saladin Salam, it's, it's not, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to save the cause. So I'm not going to let you turn it into something that it's not supposed to be, man. That's not going to happen on my watch. But all right. Uh, there was an input from members of the group to cross other breeds into the existing individuals who made it possible for him to stay. If other breeds were mixed into the call, so the breed would be destroyed immediately. So Pablo Berber left the building. And what I'm saying with that was the breed boxes and other stuff into the breed to change the bite of the dog. So this is where your undershot and your reverse scissor is coming from, Dwayne Lewis. This is where your stuff is coming from. This is where your stuff is coming from. It's not traditional, dummy. Like on some real stuff, it's not traditional. It's not traditional. It's not traditional. You said, Jeff Hall, the American dogs are a mutt breed, right? This is the history, Jeff. This is the history, Jeff. Pablo Berber left the Sachs building because of what? Because they wanted to mix other breeds into the dogs. But uh, the show breeder Italian stock aren't band dogs, huh? All right, I'm going to keep reading. All right. It says here, these dogs had to be, I mean, yeah, these dogs he had chosen from different areas in Pugla. I mean, Calabara and Bari, common of all of them, they had the characteristics of course, so should have. I don't, I don't no. But that's, that's my opinion. That's my opinion now. Like, no, 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 no. Um, fairly equal being the same size. And types and characteristics and appearance. I'm going to show you Bashir's, Bashir's family tree after this. You tell me. But okay. It is. It, it was not possible to find very type-like and uniform core souls. So they, they, was, they looked alike. They didn't look alike. Like what is it? But okay. Different areas of, the, uh, of use... And different origins of the of the Corso dogs explain the difference in his parents. Barbara knew little about the background of the breed. Except for, uh, I mean, except from what the farmers had told him. His first litter was from a bitch tipsy and a stud dog named Dono. The offspring Bashir became the model of the breed standard in 1980. So Bashir came about in 1980. And again, truthfully, that's not a kind of depressor. He's a, he's a cross. He's a cross. But I guess wherever he got Duno from, Duno probably was a mixed dog. But he didn't know because, again... Too much he didn't know about the breed. Oh, man. All right. It says, through selective breeding, Pablo wanted to reconstruct the breed, but there was a conflict. It was a conflict start towards those who would exploit the breed characteristics and public revive popularity of their own benefit. And this is when Pablo, like I said, he left the Sachs building. I read that piece. He said the breed's approval from NC and the, and, and the document, it said that the King Corso should stand out from any other Italian Malasala. And that was wrong. Hold on. Because it has to be a part two. But that was wrong. There's no King Corso without the Neapolitan. But I'm about to 